what role do you think the the culture that we have today of meat and animal based products being the centerpiece of people's diets and more acidic diets things like that in contributing an accelerated rate of decline in our right hemisphere and because it seems like as time has gone on over the last 50 years we have increased you know dramatically the amount of animal products we're consuming yeah it's accelerating the process it, again it's 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 just turning the clock back to that more primitive mammalian state and, and depending on your beliefs and what date you sort of decide might work you know it, it looks like a really distant ancestors way way back before the symbiosis were insectivorous mm. which is effectively carnivorous a direction that's just going to accelerate our decline into a more primitive state more aggression more hierarchy shorter lifespans more sickness because we're not really we haven't despite what a lot of people superficially claim we haven't evolved to eat this stuff you know we're, we're, we're like a post-symbiotic anomaly that was programmed to eat fruit but our brains changed a bit so we're not even fully programmed to eat that anymore you know our neuroassimilation system isn't in the forest anymore mm -hmm. um, and it, it's it's drifting towards its more primitive form um, we can choose to stop that and I think there are steps we can we can take and we see as people on a standard diet they switch to a plant-based diet and up the percentage of raw food and oh my god it's a transformation relatively speaking yeah you know well we can we can make those choices or we can end up being beyond the sickest creature hell-bent on self-destruction mm -hmm. and my you know as you probably gathered my main interest yes our physiology yes our health of course they're all important but i'm really interested in our state of mind and all this this kind of increasing animal-based diet and junk food and whatever is trashing the relics of, of, of probably the most amazing consciousness system in you know this side of the milky way it, yeah. it's it's so it, it, it's traumatically sad when you think the potential that we maybe once had and people get glimpses of it today it's not like the wiring's still not there to some degree when you think what, what what we're brought up to think of as normal you know you you go to school and you get some bits of paper you get a job you earn some money to buy shit which is part of the destructive process on the planet you know that, that's the standard idea of what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. and we have all these ancient traditions but but people even today either spontaneously or through techniques or through plant medicines they get glimpses of states that are you know the transient i would say are still just glimpses but they're so relatively profound that it's enough to people for people to go oh, i'll try and frame it not too bluntly but to hell with that yeah that's absolutely ludicrous and it's life changing and it can just be a couple of minutes mm -hmm. so if we could be in those states for longer and much deeper states what are we, why are we choosing this you know why why would we choose this if, if there is an option yep. and i'm hopeful that if, if a rational plan can be made and there's good evidence that that we're going to want to choose something else you know um, I hope. That's, that's, you know, that's my hope. Just to kind of summarize some specific ways that we can work on suppressing or just controlling or, you know, comforting the left side of our brain to allow for more function of our right side that will allow us to tap into that empathy, you know, compassion, mm. uh, all that sure. sort of stuff. Diet, obviously, you know, fruits and vegetables, De mainly fruits. Diet's foundation, definitely. Yeah, I, I wouldn't move from that at all. And I'd also say at this stage, I'd suggest anybody interested in any of this be prepared to do some research mm -hmm. and read and look online and watch stuff. Not just one perspective, lots of perspectives. Eventually, I think a pattern starts to emerge. But I, I would never suggest anybody take anything as read, including what I'm saying. Check it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Go and look at the data. You know, um, and then yeah, your, your diet. You mentioned obviously. Well, I, I, you know, I say this in a lot of talks now. Diet is an inappropriate word. When you think of what we've got between our ears, it's generally acknowledged to be the most complex thing we know. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal piece of engineering, and diet really if you strip it away, it's like advanced molecular engineering. We're choosing how we build and even design. And when I say design, I'm talking about how you change the, ch the transcription of, of DNA and so on. We can do that by hormonally active foods or not. So, you know, I'm talking about design, construction and fuel at a molecular level. It's incredibly complex stuff. It's shocking when you look at what we're building ourselves with now. You know, it's, it's like it's like it's like building the space shuttle using the same basic design but building it from plywood and cardboard and bits of old junk yeah. and then painting it white and go yeah it kind of looks the same it's fine it's like no way right well what we're doing to our brain is a million times worse and yet we kind of think it's okay so yeah diet but really advanced molecular engineering and i don't suggest i know not everybody would agree with me i don't suggest jumping straight back into 100 percent fruit hmm. because remember our brains change that means our neuro assimilation system has changed sure. and other things have changed like a gut biome all sorts of stuff have changed so i'd say gentle steps, you know, classic transitional stuff away from utter garbage yeah. that's going to kill you one way or another, and slowly build in these things, a the classic kind of Greek Hippocrates, whatever, you know, lots of leafy stuff to start with, slowly build the fruit up. And that's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a week. The younger you are, the fitter you are, the quicker. But I'd still say minimum two to five years and longer if you're older sure. to do a reasonable rebuild. And at that point, you're then ready to start building in other approaches like things that will inhibit the left so 
um, you know, almost the Vipassana Travis tradition is quite a powerful approach. Its, it's whole reality is based on chattering voice, either in your head or what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. If it stops that, it actually doesn't have much else about its existence. Um, so you stop talking for long enough, it just kind of shuts it down. You know, meditation is a similar sort of thing. Yoga, lo- lots of these approaches you can start with and start gentle. And then you can start building them up um, and start looking at techniques that will engage the right hemisphere. And anything from music and dance, not very rigid. You know, the left brain can follow rigid beat. But if you're looking at more flowing, complex stuff, some of the classical music, some of the modern dance music, which probably is very similar to what went on in ancient trance dance and flowing body movement, something that, that most of us that we'd feel uncomfortable with to start with, that's your left brain, oh, I don't, want to, I don't know what I'm doing. Just tell it to shut up and get on with it and, and just start moving in those weird ways to the left brain. And that's going to start stimulating it a bit. Um, more extreme approaches, and I emphasize extreme, they're not for beginners, but they are very ancient approaches. Um, I'm pretty convinced that our, because of the asymmetric degeneration or maturation, our left brain has a greater sleep requirement because it's less efficient, even though it's in charge. So you reduce your sleep. And it doesn't like it and it gets grumpy and clumsy and whatever, but you push that far enough and it starts to lose control. And that starts letting the right brain out. This is a very, very ancient approach, not something I've invented. I know I've doubled with it a bit, but um, and you can look at the plant medicines. Well, I think they specifically target the right hemisphere, at least more so than the left. Um, but again, that's not to begin with. You put in the work first, you do your research, you find the right approaches. You start combining these things. Um, so, so there's a lot of things from dietary change through gentle techniques to more powerful techniques i wouldn't suggest you rush straight to you know staying awake for a week and taking a load of whatever drugs because you might get lucky and have a great time but you, again it's it's like it's like taking a, a hand-built sports car out of the barn it's been there for 50 years and it's partly seized yeah it's a great design but you wouldn't take it on the racetrack and stick your foot down because 99 percent of the time it's going to blow up you know, you want to rebuild it. You want to find out how it's supposed to work. And eventually, when it's ready, it'll take you for the ride of your life. Yeah. But don't rush it. For you guys that are watching, I highly recommend that you get Tony's book, Return to the Brain of Eden. Definitely a must read. Tony, thanks again for joining this uh, channel and sharing you know, the things that you've learned over the last you know, 25 plus years and just helping the world to gain a little more sanity. Yeah, thanks for the invite. And I, I hope it's uh, of some interest.